I always will have a huge place in my heart for Jimmy World. Tell me about like the bands, like your connections to like some of the bands in here. Like uh, you say, you you told us you love Bayside, but yeah, uh, I love Bayside. Um, who else do you like connect with in here? Like, what do you? Um, what are, I, all, pretty much all of them, dude. Jimmy Eat World, Atticus, which is what we were talking about yeah. the other day. They came out with a DVD called Riding in Vans with Boys, and that was my staple for life when I was a kid. I wanted to be. <coughs> and it's like it follows this band, Cut You Up, who goes on tour with Blink One Eighty Two and Green Day on the Pop Disaster Tour. Oh, yeah, yeah. In like 2002. And um, I just fell in love with this DVD. And Jimmy Eat World is on the tour with them. And Jimmy Eat World was the, was it the first? I went to see Green Day play when I was like 12 years old and Jimmy Eat World opened up for them along with Flogging Molly, I'm pretty sure. And it was just the raddest, it was like my first real experience as a, at a punk concert. You yeah. Know? And then like I went to Warped Tour like two years later and then just started getting fucking crazy with punk. Um, but that was like, they were like part of my first introduction to the punk world. And so that's that I love. I always will have a huge place in my heart for Jimmy Eat World. Track 14, Kill by Jimmy Eat World. Will it just across the street? Looks in my You're just across the street Looks a mile to my feet I want to go to you Funny how I'm nervous still I've always been the easy kill Guess I always will I broke I bought a pack of cigarettes I paid $13 for the same pack That would cost me around $5 back home in Texas I've been in New York for a few years now And I still use the word home When I refer to Texas If I did the math Which we've already established that I don't do it would probably equal up to at least half of my life that I've lived outside of Texas. Yet, that is where I still refer to as home. I still don't love this city like I was so sure I would. Like the women who have come and gone through my life, I've wanted to love it. I've tried with everything I have to love it, but she just doesn't seem to want to love me back. I moved to New York with the naive enthusiasm that a child has when he goes to Disneyland for the first time. I was excited. My life was about to change and it would never be the same. But when I got to Disneyland, it was super crowded, everyone was pissed, and all that was there to greet me was overpriced hot dogs, giant pretzels, pretty buildings, and gift shops. But, like that naive little child might think, I tell myself that surely it will be better the next time. Every morning I wake up in this city and I think that, and I'm almost always wrong. Some days it's better, but it's never what Disneyland is supposed to be. I bought a pack of cigarettes. I want to say it's mainly because I was out of cigarettes, but I'm not a smoker. I can be okay being out of cigarettes. I bought a pack of cigarettes because I needed to get out of this hotel room. The fear was catching up with me. It is catching up with me. Fuck that. It's caught up with me. The extra Adderall that I took on top of the extra Adderall that I took earlier today might have something to do with that. I keep noticing new levels of how fast my heart can race without exploding. I've discovered new levels of how much my hands can shake while still being able to type words on a keyboard. I'm finding how much one can feel like they're dying without actually dying. I'm only in this hotel room for one more night. With every day, it seems to be getting smaller and smaller. I had to get out. I suppose if I did die in this room, at least my body would be found tomorrow, sprawled out, or maybe just sitting in this chair that I've spent most of my time in this weekend. While everyone I know was probably out having fun in the company of friends, I've been in a shitty desk chair in front of a computer, feeling like I'm on death's doorstep ringing the doorbell with anxiety that wants to look for an unlocked window and just break the fuck in. Turns out, writing about loneliness doesn't make you any less lonely. Writing about being fucked up in the head doesn't make you any less fucked up in the head. Some poor housekeeper, who would probably remind me of my mom, would find me limp and lifeless in front of closed pill bottles and an open laptop with an unfinished book next to a finished bottle of Johnny Walker. Who would care? I'm nobody. I don't have other books that people have loved. 
No one would say, oh no, he had one more in him and now we'll never know how it ends. Or maybe this is how it ends. But no one would care enough to finish it for me. I have to be the one who finishes it. But shit's getting dark. How is it that I think about the girl with every waking second in every single one of these tens of thousands of words that I've written and she can't even fucking send me one goddamn text message? Has one thought of me even crossed her mind this weekend? It's been almost a week since we kissed. Not one fucking text. But maybe it's for the best. If she had been more receptive this weekend, or receptive at all, there's no way I would have gotten this far. Could it be that everything?